Hey, hey guys, God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and today is the introduction to hopefully, prayerfully, Lord willing, a series of helpful tips and hidden gems to help other Christian content creators grow their channel. <clears throat> Genuinely, of course. And the reason why I said gems instead of tricks, because we're Christians and one may say that's something small, I would beg to differ. Um, we don't trick anybody. Your, your mindset and your heart shouldn't be in a mind to trick or deceive. But there are some hidden jewels or blessings um, that God has given me and showed me that I can share with you guys to help you guys grow your channel. Um, I'm going to be really old school in this video. I'm not sure how the rest of the video is going to go, but it was laid on my heart to just write this out and I'm going to share it with you. And of course, I'm going to come in a little bit. There you go. All right. So I have been wanting to do a video like this for a long time. I had started out on my twist and shout channel, making a couple of videos concerning this, but then I got pregnant and it kind of went flat. Um, and I kind of thank God for that because I learned so much more and God began to deal with me about some things because um, in honest, in honesty, some of the things that helped grew my channel wasn't necessarily good or positive. I, I just say that um, being a natural hair content creator, things tend to go a little bit different, but God helped me and showed me that um, he's got me and that no matter what you're talking about, you know, you need to be completely holy. <laughs> and there's no other way for me to say it, but just leave it at that. Like you, you have to make sure that all your advice, your critiquing, your um, knowledge and understanding of all things in a, is in a light manner, meaning that presented to the world you are blameless. But anyway, Christian YouTuber, how to grow your channel as a Christian content creator. This is why we're here. I have written the top 10 things that I focused on myself to help me grow this channel. And let's start with the fun fact. I This is my second channel. I joined or created this channel on May 19th, 2021. So a year and almost a half ago, I started this channel and I have 1,102 subscribers as of recording this video. Um, and my view count is 87,281 views. So what has happened recently is I qualify to be monetized. And of course, I accept. And I'm going to talk about that in another video too. Um these are the 10 things that I, I put extra effort into. Not saying that you should take anything light, but some things will come natural to you. And I'll get to that in a second. But these things right here, in no particular order, your presentation, um, how you look, how you, how you carry yourself, you know, um, how your clothes look on you, your face, your makeup, um, your just that in general, like your background, all of that, like people are going to look at all of that, whether we like it or not, they're going to notice everything. So you want to make sure all of that is taken care of. Like, um, this is something that I ain't gonna lie that <laughs> God got on me about a little bit because I was, I made sure my background was straight, but sometimes I wasn't caring that much on how I was presented. Like, of course I made sure my face is washed and stuff, but God let me know that um, I am a re representation of him at all times and sure. Yes. You don't want people to focus on the fact that if you're completely dressed up and with makeup and stuff, or if you're not, cause obviously I'm not a makeup person, but I can present myself in a manner that glorifies him and, you know, keeps people attention that is fair, just, and right. Personality. This is something that um, Satan, let me 
put a little star here or heart here. Satan really, really tried to damper me in this area, in this category, because naturally and in person, I'm not, I'm an introvert. I don't really hang with people. I don't really talk to people. I don't really involve myself in people things. Um, so any group settings or anything, I naturally try to avoid. Um, I kind of stay to myself. So this is something that Satan really tried to get at me with as far as the negative thoughts and the negative feelings that, you know, who are you? Nobody's going to listen to you. You're not important. You're, you're lame. You're not popular. You know, all those things. And I really had to fight this thing, obviously, with prayer and reading my word. And I really had to work on who I am in Christ and the gifts that he has given me. And I'm here today. Uh, thumbnails. This is something that I really had to help my husband with. And this is what you're going to learn, y'all. This is so funny because I noticed this with Christian content creators. There is a huge difference between what men think and what they present and what women think and what they present. And honestly, if men are honest, if you want to be honest, because, you know, I hate to do man versus woman, but if you want to be honest, women have a knack for presentation and thumbnails versus men. Men kind of need a little grooming and, and critiquing from what I've seen. Like even the most um, sound uh, exegeted or exegesis of a, a male Christian, um, their wording, what they say is solid, but the presenting that gets a little rough. Like you got to remember that you're a man and obviously you want to try to engage men and women. And some of us women are we're all about looks and you know, that's not a good thing, but that thumbnail will get someone's attention and you want to make sure of that because you have to uh, approach it in the same manner as you would if you're getting on YouTube. You're going to look and seek out videos that are presented well from beginning to end and that starts with the thumbnail. Um, lighting. Lighting is something that I find and seeing that men tend to care way more about than women. Um, not to say that we don't, because obviously I, me personally, I, I knew based on watching videos and stuff that that's a really big deal. People need to see a clear picture of you because at the end of the day, people are seek to be entertained and informed. Um, and that takes good lighting. Like they need to be able to see you or see what you're writing or see what you're doing. This, that, and the third. Um, so you have to be careful and you have to um, make sure that you invest. I remember when we got our first tripod um, with a ring light. It was a $25 one from Walmart and it works really well. We still use it to this day. Uh, we have one for church and one for home. And... Um, it works. Like it's not big. It's not a lot. I think it's like a, I think it's an eight inch ring light. It's really standard um, ring light, just enough to cover your face and give that uh, lighting to your face. Um, or if it has to point down, um, just enough to give the lighting downward. But invest. Uh, you, I would say, even if you grow and and get better, you may need to upgrade. Um, we tried upgrading, but it failed. We went and got the big Kahula, the, I think it's 15 inch uh, ring light. And y'all, it is so heavy. It doesn't even sit on the stand. The stand was just poorly made. So $50 going down the drain, but we're not going to talk about that. But anyway, and that goes hand in hand with video quality, um, making sure everything is up to par, which is hard because I don't want to make it seem like it's all about this because it's not. But at the end of the day, you do have shallow Christians that presentation means more than even what people are saying. And that kind of reels people in. Um, and it's like a, a tool. Like, I know you clicked on this thumbnail because it was it was cool looking and it was something of interest to you. Selfishly, right? Because that's what we do. We selfishly look for things that are of interest to us. And then as the you know we mature and grow with the person, we start falling in love with who God has created that person to be. So then at that point, they can start almost presenting any topic or interest video, but that comes with time. Um, but like I said, the video quality is a combination of lighting, thumbnail, equipment, um, the time and effort you put into it, 
Um, also, the biggest thing that me and my husband had to learn painfully is the view quality, as in HD or non-HD. <laughs> this is something that two things happened. One, we know that standard definition, the lowest of the low uh, quality will mess with your eyes. And obviously, if it's hard to see and hard to focus, people aren't going to watch long. They're not going to want to watch long and they're going to automatically lose interest versus if you have that good quality somewhere around 720, 10K, if you can afford it. I mean, 1080, if you can afford it. Um, it looks better. Think about when you're watching TV. If you have the option of HD or SD, you're going to choose HD every single time. And the same should be your mindset when it comes to your YouTube videos. People are going to choose high definition over standard definition every single time. Um, now, do you have to go out and do the 4K thing? Me personally, I don't. I think you have to, that's where you have to um, be a keeper of your brothers and sisters because the higher the quality, the more internet it uses on my end as well as the viewer. So I keep it at 1080. And sometimes if I can, I do 720 because I know that it's reserving my energy and my upload as well as whoever has to watch it. So something to keep in mind. Research. Whatever you're talking about, whatever you're going to discuss, research it. I find oftentimes that I talked about this in another video that we're all monkey see, monkey do. Um, we learn from others and we get ideas and, and tips from others. That's normal. That's fine. That's not really an issue. The only problem is um, you're going to run into something else we're going to talk about, which is originality. Like what makes you stand apart? Like you're covering the same stories as everyone else, but what is your uh, what about your view and your take on it makes it significantly different. So do your research on whatever you're going to talk about, whatever you're going to discuss and really get familiar about what it is that you're getting yourself into. Time. Time is so important. It's not on my side right now because I have a six month old, but, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, even in seasons like this. Um, God has made a way and he works things out in my favor continuously. And I thank God for that. Um, a advantage of anyone who has older kids or no kids, um, like a whole lot of young Christian YouTubers, um, I find that their quality and their editing and, and their creativity uh, just surpasses somebody like me. And I love and I admire that. And I learn from them because they have the time, energy, in space and opportunity and they take full advantage of that and i'm at, talking to everybody when i say that everybody should aim at doing so as much as you possibly can and that may take sacrifice it may take staying up 30 minutes later or getting up 30 minutes earlier or designating an hour into investing into learning and creating content and practicing all of that so time is important this one right here I put a check beside that because that's something I had struggled with too. Consistency. And then there's people that do too much, people that do too little, but you got to find a middle and you got to figure out um, what it is about your audience that they actually like or cater or what you can you cater to. Now, here's what the issue comes about because unfortunately on YouTube, you got to have at least 500 subscribers to get the community post. The community post is where you can talk and engage and do polls with your subscribers. This is so important. And this is why I used to say all the time when I first started out, y'all, just get me to 500 subscribers so I can talk to y'all. Because I mean, you can talk and comment on the videos and make videos about comment and stuff. But it's something about interacting and engaging and the posting that we're familiar with. Because where do we come from? A lot of us come from Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. So we're familiar with posting and response and reading and engaging. Like this is who we are. This is how we're natural are as human beings. So if I can engage with you outside of YouTube or my video, we can create personal relationships and we can establish um, boundaries, um, regulations and all that thing in more depth and more consistency um, and kind of have everybody on the same page. So 
without that, I understand the burden and the struggle in the beginning because it's like, hey, I can't even say anything outside of a video. And obviously you need time and effort and energy to do a video. However, one of the biggest things that I've seen work for most people that I would say that I can't really give credit to because I'm kind of indecisive and random is the consistency of posting time, upload time, and really designating your days that where you're going to make sure something is available. Um, this is a old school repetitive approach and it obviously it works and you help people create a routine to support you. Like I know, for example, that my husband posts a video on Wednesday. So I understand and I make my business to check on Wednesday or to be notified, hit the notification bell so that I don't miss when he actually posts and I set my mind and schedule my life around the fact that he's going to post on Wednesday. And this is something I have to do as a subscriber myself, as a supporter, as a wife, um, and as a YouTuber myself. I try my best not to post around his time or at least not on his time. And I try my best to make sure I'm available to support. And that is something that we all as Christian content creators, we need to help support and encourage each and every one. Um, subscribe, even if you don't always necessarily agree or understand or comprehend or relate to what they post. Subscribe, um, watch and support what you can. Like I said, I know for me personally, um, I'm going to say this on camera right now so everybody be made aware. Um, if I appear to be biased, I apologize because that's not my intent. I have an extreme short attention span and I try my best to spread out the love, but sometimes I get stuck on one or two persons at a time or a season. And we have to also remember too, that we all are having a relationship with God. And if we truly believe that the Christian content creator is hearing from the Lord, then there are going to be seasons where one subject is going to be of interest to us over another, you know what I'm saying? So like, say I'm struggling with um, the idea of giving or uh, offering and, and tithing and stuff like that. I'm going to listen to someone who's talking about that more repetitively so so I can get help immediately. Or if somebody's dealing with modesty or marriage, like if I'm having issues with my marriage, I'm going to be more prone to listen and follow someone who talks about that more often in this season because that's what I need, which can make for really uneven and staggering views um, from your subscribers because we're Christians and we have to practice self-control. So a lot of us aren't going to binge watch every video. A lot of us aren't going to, um, you know, catch every single video. So we got to remember as a YouTuber and a subscriber that we all have different walks with Christ and some of us have more time than others. And some of us may be in need of one subject over another. So remember that. So I just talked about content indirectly. Um, you're going to learn your audience. And obviously when you first starting off, this is hard because a wide range of people are going to come to you based on what you have already post. But what's important is how you start is how you need to finish. I literally just witnessed a, a Christian content creator, YouTube go down in the hole because they did a three or a 180 on people. Like they went from posting like this to doing something else and people weren't feeling it and they took it personal. And now they have this, they're giving everyone this kind of bitter taste in their mouth about how they're talking, how they present themselves and they're losing, people are losing interest and they're losing respect. And all those, in some aspects, I can say, you know, we have to be fair and we have to remember that we're all struggling in this daily walk. However, God has given all of us the same Bible and we all have the same rules and regulations. We all to be holy at all times and we all should be kingdom minded. Like what is glorifying God, not me, what is going to benefit, not what's going to benefit me, but what is edified in the church. And sometimes that can come with a cause that you may or may not be willing to pay for, but it's going to happen nonetheless. Um, and that's something that I have to make sure I keep in my mind, which is why I separated my faith content from my hair content because the hair content generates far more numbers, likes, share, and subscribers than the faith side. But if you are a Christian, you know that we're in this world and not of this world. And obviously there's more worldly people that gravitate to more ungodly, well, I don't want to say ungodly or unholy because there's nothing unholy about hair, but 
I hope you get what I'm saying. I know I have trouble articulating myself sometimes, but um, the hair is more popular than Christ. Plain and simple. Obviously not in our hearts and our minds because we are Christians, but in this world, hair is more important than being a Christian or Christian content because Christian and non-Christians alike are into taking care of their hair versus Christian content. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, 10, talents and strength. Goes back to what I said before, what it is that God has given you. What gift do you have? Do you have the gift of teaching? Do you have the gift of encouraging? Do you have the gift of journaling? Do you have the gift of prayer? Like, what are your gifts and your strengths? Naturally, we all try to pull and take at all these areas because the idea is to grow. But we have to be careful with that because you want to make sure you're sincere and that you're genuine at all all times, even when the numbers aren't there, uh, which I'll get to that in a second. But let me, before you do anything, when you're just starting, you ain't, you ain't got a subscriber, you ain't really got an idea about your content, you need to do these three things. Pray, plan, and be productive. When you pray, your answer from God needs to be, yes, I want to do this. Yes, you gave me to go to do this because oftentimes people create YouTube channels for these three reasons and it could be more, but I get to that as I go. And I'm sorry that I didn't thank you, Holy Spirit, because I didn't even, that wasn't even in my mind, but this is very important. The number one thing is money. Whether we want to admit or believe it or not, a lot of Christian content creators are trying to establish a second form of income. Um, they're trying to pay bills and they figure I'm a Christian. I think I know what I'm talking about so I can get money in the process. That's just the truth. A lot of people are taking this route of ministry because it pays far more than trying to establish and build a church and getting members. And that's the truth. And that's the sad truth because this is not kingdom minded. God will take care of you. He will provide. It is fair to obviously create books, uh, uh, pamphlets, um, programs, uh, coffee mugs, hats, shirts, and all that. It's obviously fair to create these things and expect to make money from it. That's fair. But if you initially start and begin with, I want to preach and teach, or I want to present Christ to the world for a fee, then you're going to fail every single time. So you make sure your heart is in check and understand that the intent for of me and my heart is I want to gain souls for Christ. I want to be a vessel. That should be your goal to point people to Jesus at all times. The second would be, um, trying to get, I don't know how to short this, but, um, I'm just going to put selfish reasons. Oftentimes, people do a spinoff from opposing another channel or they they say or claim they see a need or a lack for this. So then they create their own. And I say selfish because a lot of times this is rooted in unholy desires and emotions as well because I've seen so many. I'm just going to use this as an example because everybody knows this person. But Marcus Rogers, a lot of people made a spinoff channel from going against him and that's how they gain their proper popularity and their growth and then when people are like all right what more do you have to offer nothing again you have to make sure this is god saying i want you to create a youtube channel i want you to talk about this and da 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 and with that the growth and the development will come because god doesn't do anything halfway and if it's his will his will will be planned established and received at least on your part even if the world rejects you on your part it should be received um thirdly um let's see here do i have a third i'm trying to do big ones main ones um money selfishness um that kind of goes with this but I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Um, we are in a world, in a generation where social media means everything. And numbers 
are associated with how one may feel about their self at the end of the day. 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 subscribers, not only are people feeding to this as in um, a, a sense of self-worth, but also in a means of importance or significance, like, um, I want to say arrogance, but, you know, a means to be a people person, to be liked, known, and viewed by all. The, obviously, the more numbers, the more views, the more subscribers, it's understood that more people are watching, more people are listening, more people are following, subscribing, sharing, all of that. And that can kind of go to one's head. And then again, again, it goes back to being selfish or worrying about yourself. Then you lose sight of God and what the goal was in the first place, which was to win souls and to point people to Jesus. So be really careful that money and any selfish reason and clout chasing is not why you're here, please. Um, and obviously you pray about it and talk to God about it. All right, let's go down here. This section is going to get bigger over time, but... Um, these are things that I find that deter me or even feed into my the lack of attention span. Um, eye contact. This is something so... Matter of fact, I'm going to cut the video off right here and I'm going to do a part two. That's what I'm going to do because I think I cut the general stuff and I cover the positive stuff. So I'm going to I'm gonna cut that off right here because the video is long enough. But um, please stay tuned. This served kind of like an introduction um, but I will come back and add more to this. So just stay tuned and I do a part two. So love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.